Clark. Hey y'all, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to this, a get ready with me with this shimmery blue sparkly look featuring some brushes from Delium Tools. Welcome to my groom. I'm actually filming this intro after like filming a whole other set of videos, so my makeup might look a little more worn than when I just finished filming and I forgot to film the intro, so here we are. I love this look. It's like kind of a recreation of a look I did on Instagram a couple weeks ago. And I got this set of brushes in the mail from Delium Tools. They sent it to me as PR. It's the Golden Triangle Complete Brush Set Phase 2. I think there's like four different versions of this that are currently released. They're all brushes that have a triangular handle. I don't know if you can see, but it's triangular, so it's supposed to be more ergonomic and easy to use. I think I used 12 of the 15 brushes in this look today, uh, just to really get a sense of them. This is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid to talk about this brand at all, and I, I've never been sponsored. I'm not ever going to be sponsored. That road is not in my uh, trajectory as a YouTuber, but I do receive PR sometimes from brands, again, with no responsibility to say anything about them. Um, Delium Tools is a brand that I uh, loved. Uh, I've really only talked about one of their brushes in depth on my channel, which is the Delium Tools 990. This is like my holy grail contour brush. And I guess they must have seen me or seen my videos or just seen me and liked me and decided to send me this brush set. And I I'm very grateful for that. It's very sweet. I'm going to use them. You can see me actually use them and give you my honest opinion of what I think of them. Then at the end of the video, I'll tell you whether I think they're worth it, if the set's worth it, whether they're individually worth it, etc. These are all vegan, cruelty-free brushes. That's their whole thing. The first time I, I encountered Delling Tools was at IMATS. I went and saw their stall and and it was, they, I thought they were really interesting, really interesting pieces. They're between high end and like a drugstore level brush. So they're really kind of this middle ground professional makeup brush that I think are really, really great. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's jump in. Let's see how this brush set performs and how you can get this fabulous look. <clears throat> oh, yes, yes. All right, I'm all shaven. I'm ready to go. I'm moisturized. I used my First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream and uh, my Lush Eye Cream under my eyes. Who knows if that does anything? I also put on my Sunday Riley CEO, which I have a really exciting review coming up for that. This video is going up after my Drunk Elephant review, so you will have seen me talk about that. Uh, but just to remind you, it is a review with my mom. <laughs> I'm so excited to do that with her. Everybody uh, that's seen her and met her via the internet loves her, and everyone that meets her in person loves her, and I love her, and she's amazing. And I'm so excited to do that with her. I got my coffee. I know it's like 4 p.m. or whatever, but oof, girl. Okay. First, I'm going to use this. This is the Scandinavia Makeup Primer Spray in the Oil Control Formula. I uh, talked about this when I um, when I did my uh, Scandinavia <laughs> comparison uh, setting spray showdown. I talked about this because I was sent this from Octoly. Just been using it. I'm, I'm not completely sure if it does anything, but I like just a cooling mist to begin my makeup with. Then for primer, I'm going to start with the Shea Moisture Primer. I actually used this before and I talk about it in my What Happened to Your Face, my last one that I posted. Now I know Shea Moisture had that whole kind of kerfluffle with uh, their ad campaign. They tried to talk about like the struggle of white women with red hair and women of color as the same, and it was like a big kind of, uh, it was a big marketing flop. Uh, you know, they just kind of missed the point. They offended a lot of their customers, and they apologized in a really great way. They were like, we fucked up. Sorry. We Now we know that that's wrong. We shouldn't have done that. You know, they didn't say, I'm sorry, you're offended. And if you watched my last anti-haul, you'll know all of my thoughts about that phrase. So that's why I'm cool with the brand Shea Moisture. You know, if you, I really feel like they messed up pretty hard and I think they they, they dealt with it correctly uh, in the best way possible. Unlike a couple of other brands and people that may remain 
nameless at this moment in time. So that's why I'm down with Shea Moisture at the moment. And also because I love this. It's actually really nice. It gives your skin a kind of like a little bit of stickiness, but it's like a moisturizing cream. It doesn't feel like a silicone-y type primer or anything. Speaking of silicone type primers, I'm then gonna go in with the Lorac Porefection Primer. This is just a, you know, silicone kind of like pore filling and mattifying primer. And this I'm gonna apply just a little differently. I'm going to pat it around all of my face. Really focusing on like up here where I have some larger pores and my chin, where I used to have a beard. <laughs> and then I'm just going to very gently smooth it in. And then I'm gonna let this set. And while it's setting, I'm going to use a little lip scrub. Uh, I love the e.l.f. exfoliating lipstick thing, but right now my lips aren't too bad, so I'm gonna use this. This is called the San Juan Shakes. It's a pineapple lip scrub from the brand Perfectly Posh. This is a brand that uh, I wasn't familiar with. A subscriber sent me a bunch of Perfectly Posh products months and months ago, and I've been trying them out and using them. None of them are like too remarkable, but this is a nice lip scrub, so voila. I'm gonna take this off. Ooh, I already feel it getting too hot. You see the lip sweat's already happening. I'm going to top off my lips with this. This is Papa Ointment. It is from the brand Models Prefer. <laughs> my friend Jade got me this as a little in a little gift basket when I went and stayed with her in Perth. She's such a sweetheart. Hey girl! <laughs> anyway, this is she actually got me a bunch of Papa ointments to try out. This is my favorite, the Models Prefer. It's just like the kind of like smoothest and uh it really seems to last the longest and hydrate me the longest. I prefer this to the Lucas's Pop Ointment, which has uh, petroleum in it. It has like Vaseline in it. This does not. This is petroleum free. There are no parabens, no sulfates, and no petrochemicals. So, you know, when I found out that Lucas's was, had petroleum in it, I was kind of like, ugh, is there a natural version of it? Because really the thing about this Pop Ointment that I love is the papa, the papaya in it, that really I feel like is the most effective uh, ingredient in it. So that's why I was excited to try one that didn't have petroleum in it. And this, this is the one models prefer. I gotta find out where to get this in the States, maybe Cost Plus World Market. I don't know, do they sell cosmetics? I got my Tim Tams at Cost Plus. Girl, if you haven't tried them. Tim Tam, Tim Tam Slam! Have one more sip of coffee. And I'm gonna go moisten. I'm going to go uh, dampen my beauty blender and I will be right back. This beauty blender has seen better days, girl. I mean, so has my Manny. This is, I put this on Tuesday. It's like, a, it's a Chanel nail polish in the shade Dragon and has no top coat on. I think it's still worn pretty well for, what is that? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Five days of wear without a top coat. Girl, stay tuned for my Chanel nail polish collection video. I asked if y'all wanted it. You said you did, it's coming up. Let us get this foundation on! I'm going to use my Krylon TV Paint Stick Foundation. This is in the shade Ton She. This I did order from Krylon's website. And again, like I've mentioned in other videos, it's a shade that's not listed. The last time I ordered it, it was not listed on the website, uh, but it is available. So you just order any foundation shade, uh, and then you write in the note section that you want Ton She. It's T-A-W-N-S-H-E-E. -E. This is great because it's kind of cool. And you know, I have like pinky undertones, but I have like freckles, so I also have like warm undertones. It's really, my skin's really weird. It's like hard for me to kind of define what undertones it is. But I find that this works really well because if I use a warmer foundation, it's harder for me to kind of combat the warmth with the rest of the makeup on my face. But if I use a cooler shade like this, it's, uh, it's pretty easy for me to kind of bronze it up and add any kind of warmth or color that I want, just for my skin tone. So if you're similar to me, I think this is a great shade. Also, it's a little bit deeper than my skin tone, which is my preference for a foundation-based shade because I kind of use it as like a cream contour. I don't add cream contour. I basically just have my base shade be a little 
slightly deeper, not too deep, of course. And then I add a cream highlight, which you will see in a minute. So I'm just going to pat that out with my Beauty Blender sponge. I'm going to do it very gently. Is this a holiday makeup look? Yeah, sure, sure it is. Sure it's a holiday makeup. I love how people post, I mean, you know, no shade to anybody that did a holiday makeup tutorial, but I'm like, what makes it holiday? Why do we, is it because you're doing it during the holidays? Because it's for a holiday party and because there's red in it. That's what makes it holiday. I mean, please. This is a glamorous makeup look. That's just another, you know, another way of getting you to, to be into something because it's like, oh, it's poignant, it's seasonal, it's appropriate now. Holiday schmoliday, that's what I have to say. I am going somewhere, actually. I'm getting ready, well, I'm filming a bunch of videos, hopefully, if I have time, if I don't just talk forever and not get this shit done. I'm going to host a fundraiser for Food for Friends, which is a charity here in New Orleans that provides meals and food for people living with HIV and AIDS in need. So I, I, I've, if you don't know, I've, uh, I have a history with uh, AIDS charities. I used to work at Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, a program of Broadway Cares called Dancers Responding to AIDS. I was the associate producer there for a couple of years. I think it's always better to uh, provide money to people that are alive and need the help <laughs> right now uh, than to be providing money for research. Of course we need money for medical research and stuff like that, but you know, there's already a lot of celebrity support for those kinds of organizations and a lot of government support for those organizations. So I think it's always really important to take care of people that are in need at the moment. And so I love organizations and charities like Food for Friends that um, are really helping people with what they need to survive right now. Anyway, that's my, that's my little take on, on charitable charity this season. Hey girl, yeah, look at that, look at that lip sweat already on, on fleek. Lip sweat on f Is fleek a thing still? Do we still say that? I don't know. Should we do it? Should we crack it? All right. The reason we're doing this get ready with me is to play with these brushes from Delium Tools. This is the Golden Triangle Complete Brush Set Phase 2. Here she is. She came in this little zippy pouch. I'm already getting dirty, thank you. Delium Tools, I love. The Delium Tools 990 is one of my favorite brushes for doing contour. I'm gonna try to use a different brush today and see what happens. I'm nervous, I'm nervous. We'll see what goes on. Anyway, I never ever apply cream products with a brush. I love the Beauty Blender and I'm probably gonna have to blend this out regardless, but let's just try it and see what happens. I'm going in with the shade TV White from Krylon. I'm going to take this uh, Delium Tools. This is from the Golden Triangle Collection. This is their new collection where the triangular shaped brush handle, like ergonomic. It does feel really nice. This is the uh, 956 Slanted Precision Kabuki Brush. Very dense uh, synthetic fiber brush. Again, these are all vegan. I never do this. So let's see what happens. I'm just going to... Is this how you do this? Oh. I mean, it's applying it. I feel like I'm just gonna apply it with the stick and then I'm gonna blend it out with this, sorry. I mean, but that's nice. Okay, so yeah, so I just added a thick, thick swabs of my uh, Krylon TV paint stick in the shade TV White. Now let's blend it out with this guy and see what happens. I'm curious to see what happens on my upper lip because I find that when I use the Beauty Blender to blend out product, cream product on my upper lip and I'm already this sweaty, it just like, everything just moves around. So maybe this will be better, maybe it'll be worse. I don't know. I'm liking this. I feel like not as much product is coming off onto the brush as when I use my Beauty Blender. Is that possible, is that true? I don't know. Oh, girl, okay. Well, it, it really moves the product around. Like I'm really spreading it out. I don't want it to spread out that much, though. Uh-oh. What are we doing here? All right, moment of truth. Let's go on the lip. You know, 
I'm kind of liking this because I find that on the lip, if I do a little, if I if it's not just kind of directly straight on, if I'm actually doing, if I'm actually, if I'm not doing just going straight on, I'm actually kind of doing a slight swipe. It kind of keeps it nice and smooth, just on that upper lip area. Y'all, I'm. This is great. Is this my new cream highlight blender? It might very well be. Just do a little tiny touch up just around the edges with my beauty blender, just the clean kind of bottom end, just to blend it in with that foundation shade a little better. See, I kind of sheer it out towards the top of my face. I don't know if anybody's noticed that in my makeup and stuff. Just because I, I don't, I don't need, uh, I only need full coverage where I'm really carving for me, for my drag look. Uh, like what I do and uh, you know the the more full coverage I get towards the top of my face the more I feel like it's just gonna get all over my wig anyway all right I already see little sweat holes forming everywhere so we got to set this shit fast to set my highlight areas uh, anywhere I put that TV white I'm going to be using the NARS soft velvet loose powder in the shade snow holy grail setting powder for me and I'm going to take the Delium Tools 960 Precision Blusher Brush. It's just a kind of flattened, fluffy blush brush. But this looks very much like the brush that I usually use to set my high points of my face. I'm just going to take my finger and just blend out any crease in under my eye. Then very quickly, pop it in here. I just shake some powder out into the lid. And I'm going to pop it on. I'm going heavy with this because I'm I'm baking. So I'm going to brush off the excess powder. I gotta say this is a little a uh, little denser than I prefer for this step in my process, which means that it's probably even too dense for a blusher for me. I like my blushers to be a little fluffier. And this is definitely dense. This really feels more like a kind of a foundation brush, but it's lovely. I mean, it's working. Let's get on up here. Oh my God, this is all just like going. Look at it. I'm just like, I feel like I'm sweating through everything. My makeup's creasing faster than ever. Wow, horrible. What do I do? I'm going to add just more powder to the center of my face right here, down my nose a little bit. And then... I'm gonna try to put powder onto my upper lip. This is my big problem area, and I'm gonna all, I'm gonna continue to use that same technique where I just brush ever so slightly downward. Try to keep it nice and smooth. Who knows? Let's see if that works. I'm on the chin a little bit. Okay, now. This is uh, my Cody Airspun loose powder container. There's no more product left in here. It's like totally empty and I have the powder puff. What I'm going to do is take some of this RCMA no color powder. This is the, so like for me, my makeup, what, no matter how bad my makeup is looking, like right now it looks kind of bad. This step, the full on like powder puff bake step is really important. It really just like gets everything cakeified and perfect and then I just let it sit there for a while. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm just going to take a huge amount and I'm just going to pack it. The reason you go from the bottom up, which I've said in other videos, is because as you keep packing on powder, you're going to get some fallout. So you're going to get powder falling down on your face because you're using it really loosely. And if it falls onto a powdered portion of your face, it's it's not really gonna like gunk up or like become like a big weird gunky chunk. It's just gonna be able to be brushed off really easily. Again, this was sent to me by D, one of my fabulous subscribers slash benefactors. See, I'm going right over the areas where I set with my NARS powder for extra, extra coverage and smoothness. 
I'm hoping that uh, this RCMA powder will fix some of these weird sweat dollops that I have. But I have a feeling it won't because here they come again. Wow. Studio uh, lights are really hot. Like this is really hot right now. I would never purposefully get ready in front of lights this bright, ever. <sighs> I'm gonna dust off my lips while we're here. <sighs> Apply some more of that pop ointment. Now this uh, powder, as you can see, it's pretty light. <laughs> it's white. But that tone, I mean, it doesn't really linger. You can, you dust it off and it kind of, it goes away, it's kind of fine. All right, I'm gonna shut off my setup for just a minute, let this stuff bake for a couple minutes, and then I'm going to start dusting everything off. All right, BRB. All right, we are back, and uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of... Hey y'all, I'm gonna need to come and perform at Happy Let's Eat. My Instagram story. So I don't know if you can tell, but it kind of has, you know, this powder's kind of absorbed some of the oil, it doesn't look as, you know, like here. I don't know, let's see. I'm gonna take her off, actually. I don't have a super large powder brush here. I've got some other brushes that I wanna save for some other things. So I'm actually gonna use a non Delium Tools brush for this. I'm just gonna use the Sephora Large Powder Brush. This is number 30. And like I was saying in my, uh, what happened to your face, I, this, you kind of have to, when you dust it off, this RCMA powder, you gotta like do a little bit of swirling. You can't just like, and it's gone. It's a little more, more difficult to remove. I don't know if that makes sense. See, like I have to do that to kind of smooth it out. But I feel like for the purposes of my ridiculously sweaty skin right now, this might be good because it's kind of going to help everything look a little smoother. And as you can see, I'm starting from the top down and I'm just dusting off that bake, still really lightly, because I don't want to mess up everything underneath. I'm saving my upper lip for last because I know she's gonna be a pain. All right, let's see what happens. This is gonna be bad. I can already feel it. We're gonna deal with her somehow. I don't know how, but. Time to contour. I actually rearranged my Lunatic Cosmetic Labs Contour Palettes Volume 1 and 2 because the pans are removable. I made uh, this one kind of all my contour shades, like cool contour and highlight shades. So what I'm going to do is take this. This is the Delium Tools Tapered Powder 974 brush. It's a big, fluffy, look, you could even like see how much it, how much give it has. Very fluffy. This is a tapered powder brush, but I think it's going to work for me for contouring. I love the Delium Tools 990. It's my holy grail contour brush, but right now we're gonna try this one and see what happens. I'm gonna take this shade. I think this is from the volume one, and it is the medium cool shade. I'll swirl it in there, and then let's just, let's just see if we can do this, see what happens. I'm just going to pat and then blend. I'm gonna mix it with this shade. I think this is the deep cool shade. Some of the deeper shades, especially in the volume two, some people were nervous that they went on a little too patchy. Now, I think that they, they can get a little too patchy if you don't use a fluffy enough brush to apply them. I don't like to do the line and then blend out. That really works for cream for me, but not for powder. I like to try to be as light and diffusive as possible from the moment of application. And again, just really patting, patting up and down, and then very light blending. You don't wanna like go in like crazy to blend. It's just gonna mess everything up. Taking some of the deep warm shade from the volume one palette. Again, this is not where those shades are located in the original layout of the palette. That is just where I have rearranged them. I'm going right on the jawline, making my little chin slap shape. Getting all of that. Get it, contour it, make it go away, go away. 
Let's just do a touch with that medium cool shade up here at the hairline. Again, I don't really do much up here. And then I'm gonna go back to that 960 Precision Blusher Brush by Delian Tools. I'm going to do a combo of these top three shades. This is the white shade from the Volume 1 palette, the lightest blush shade, and then the cream yellow shade. I'm just gonna kind of mix those three together and make sure to get it on, get some of that on the end of the brush because I'm gonna go wherever I put that highlight earlier, that NARS Soft Velvet, and just really brighten brighten up the high points of my face. I find that mixing in the pink shade, for me, for someone who's so pale, makes it look a little bit more natural. It doesn't make me look as ghastly as I normally look. Just using the white shade for uh, the bridge of my nose, and I'm just going up and down. And as you may notice, I didn't really put contour on my nose. I didn't. I'm just going back in with that large tapered powder brush to blend out these edges. I'm going to contour the sides of my nose in a second. Can we put anything on top of this upper lip area? Let's see. I'm going to do this and see if this will help. No, that didn't help. Okay, to contour the nose, I'm gonna take this uh, 785 tapered blending brush, take some of the lightest medium cool shade, and then a touch of the uh, deep warm shade, I think is what it's called from the Volume 1 palette. I'm just gonna start at the base of my nose. Really fluffy, fluffy brush is good for this, and then just go up a little tiny bit, up to there. I will touch this up again once I'm done, but just to create a little base, and then get it right on that bulb of the nose. This is something you wanna do if you want to make your nose look a little smaller, especially at the tip. But I like to start at the bottom so I can deposit the most product there and then blend it upwards. And then I'm just gonna take some of that right on the edges of my nostrils, just so they don't look high lit and uh, this doesn't make my nose look any wider than it is. I'm gonna start working on the eyes. Now I have this very specific eye look planned out. I think it's gonna look really good. Uh, it's kind of a copy of a look that I posted on Instagram um, and that I've done a couple times. I think it's really unique and pretty and I just want to showcase it right now because uh, it also features one of my favorite local indie makeup brands. So let's jump into this eye. Let's zoom in. Basically, the anatomy of this look is a cream color base. Then I'm going to carve out my crease. Then I'm going to make the center of the lid blingy and then complete the rest of the eye look. That's kind of the, the order in case you're wondering. So let's start out with a creamy base. I'm going to use the NYX Slide On Glide On and definitely a turn on eye pencil uh, in the shade Azure. It's just like a sparkly blue. And for this, I'm just carving out the entire shape of my lid that I want. So I like to kind of like look forward as if my mirror right here, my mirror is like right a little lower. So it's gonna look like I'm looking down, but I'm not. I'm actually looking straight ahead. And I am going to draw where my crease is gonna be. And I could raise my eyes a little bit to actually fill it in. I'm gonna go up a little higher. See, this is actually above my natural crease, of course. And then see, look ahead again, and you can see some of that blue. That's so your eye makeup looks the way you want it to look when people are looking at you. A lot of times we have a tendency of doing our eye makeup while looking down or with our eyes closed. But then, you know, it's that's not how you're really going to come off when people really see you. But generally that kind of shape. These pencils are super creamy, so be really careful with them. But for me and the purposes of this look, I really like that. Sharpener again. At this point, I like to use a creamy brush to kind of blend this out. Let's see what we can use. Maybe this guy. 
Yeah, let's use her. So this is the uh, Bold Concealer Brush, the 337. It's just a very stiff, very flat concealer type brush. I'm just going to just smooth this out. Make sure there's no, like, any, ex there's not excess product anywhere, like you can see here. Kind of have to move this around a little bit because it's kind of bunched up right there. And then the edges just kind of blend out a little bit. Next, I'm going to take this Delium Tools 774 large shader brush and I'm going to take my Vizart neutral mattes palette now if you watch my what happened to your face video for reference this is the second one they sent me this is batch 17 M this is different than the first one that I got I had some issues with wear on the first one that I tried so I'm going to try this one and see if there's any difference Just different batch number might feel uh, might last a little differently so that, there we go I'm going to take this very warm reddish shade over here just on the edge of the brush and I'm going to trace out my trace out my crease yeah these shadows apply and blend superbly Truly, like this is the amount of effort I have to put into this to blend as I'm applying is minimal. I'm basically creating my like cat eye shape with the shade. This is really just going to be a kind of like transition shade for me. I don't know how much of this you're really gonna see by the end, but I wanted something a little warm to kind of contrast the cool eye. Yeah, just speed, efficiency, gorgeous. Beautiful. The, the, the amount of time it took me to do that was extremely quick. That's amazing. Other eye? Constantly checking in between both eyes to make sure that they are even. Actually, now I'm going to take this. This is the 776 blending brush. It's a little smaller than the tapered blending brush. The... Uh, 785. Again, all of these brushes are from the Golden Triangle collection. And then with new product on, I'm just going to blend out the very edge. Now, like I uh, maybe mentioned in the What Happened to Your Face, these shadows, the blendability is superior because not only do they blend very well when you're using uh, another shadow to blend, they also blend really well if you don't have anything on underneath. I mean, I have foundation and powder on underneath, but sometimes when you're when you're blending into that uh you know shadows can just kind of disappear but this i found really really versatile like look how nice look how nice and quick that blended out blended not blended boom holding the brush a little further than i was before just to keep that blend as kind of soft as possible these shadows can move around a bit not a ton but if you want to kind of keep the blend precise and not kind of just get all over the place, you don't want to use a ton of pressure. Decisions, decisions. I need to put some matte black, the matte black from this palette, on that line. And I think what I'm going to do is use this, the uh, 763 angled brow brush. Not super small angled brush, but small. And I'm going to dip into the matte black shade. Now this is the shade that I've had problems with in the other batch of this palette. I'm basically just going to go along that line, that newly created crease line, and slightly blend it up a little bit with this brush. I wanna go as close to the line as possible, even overlapping that blue a little bit, and then take it up this way, because I'm going to blend it into my brow eventually. And then you know what, I'm gonna go back in with that large shader brush, and just right into the black, and just get that outer corner, take it in all the way down. And then just using the shader brush to actually make sure I have enough black shadow there along that line to blend up. Okay, 776 blending again. Ugh. 
yeah, just effortless blending. I'm just going right on the line between those two shades. Gorge! I mean, these shadows a little goes a long way too. Really nice. Okay, now here I'm getting some of that patchiness. I'm curious about that. I know some of you might think that I need, I should have primed uh, that whole area where I'm doing my crease, but I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I have never done that. I've never really had such uh, pigmentation issues with a, a good matte black before. Blending it out again. Not gonna worry too much about the uh, the shapes of that crease really yet. It's the lid. I'm about to put some very intense pigment on it, and hopefully it will cut it out a little bit more. But right now, I am just gonna make sure I have enough of that matte black right here on this edge of that, like right by that, the edge of the blue and the outer corner. Now once you've blended the edge, you could easily kind of go back in and pack on color to deepen it. See what I'm doing? And not really worry about blending this. Know what I mean? <laughs> not super even, but we're gonna fix that. Okay, next. I'm going to take my NYX Glitter Primer and I'm just going to take it on the edge of my finger, fingertip, just like a pump that size, a little squeeze that size. I'm going to actually rub it between my fingers just to, to shear it out a little bit and spread it out a little bit. And then I'm going to pat it very gently, like right wherever I have that blue. We're basically gonna put like a pigment, a loose pigment on the, on the blue part of the eye. So make sure you get it right up into that crease line. And again, don't worry about going over the crease line because this stuff dries clear and matte. And we're really gonna, we're basically cutting the crease with glitter. And it's really like up until this point, like anything you've done, it's not really gonna matter. Once you put something sparkly on it, it's gonna look great. Okay, so now, <laughs> got that like patchy blue, it's all set. See, look. Doesn't that, well that, I kind of, that's kind of my fault. That little black right there that's kind of patchy. I think that's just because I was, you know, just glitter gluing it, but I don't know, you guys. I think the moral of this story still on Vizart is that I'm still, I'm still on the fence with them. Going in with this, this is like the star of this look. I'm so excited about this. This is from Magnolia Makeup. This is their loose pigment in the shade Cosmic Candy. It is like a pinky blue shifting pigment. Oh, I don't know if you can see that at all. It's just, I mean, you can see it more in the lid. Like, it's just beautiful. Anyway, now that I have that primer on, I can simply take my uh, bold concealer brush again, my 937, and I'm going to just dip it in. Shake off any excess. And now, I'm just going to pack it on wherever I have that uh, blue. Look at this. Look what's happening. Girl, girl. And this is why I like a kind of narrow concealer type brush because I'm going to get right up that crease line. Cut that out. Cut it out. This is like maybe one of my favorite I mean, it's my favorite loose pigment I've ever tried. It's truly a standout product. Mmm. Cosmic candy, girl. Stunting. So now, uh, now is the point where I always just like do my brows no matter what I'm doing. For this look, I'm just gonna do black brows. I'm wearing a blonde wig, but 
I want I want a fast brow look and the fastest brow look that I know of is to use liquid eyeliner I'm going to use the physician's formula eye booster in the shade ultra black I'm basically just going to draw my eyebrows on I know this is a little scary to do but it's okay you'll be fine I'm just gonna start kind of in that crease I'm gonna do some like hairs or something to kind of mark where I'm gonna be a little Sasha Velour action and I'm just gonna go up and create a new arch, comme ça. And I'm just gonna kind of fill it in. You're gonna notice the same technique. Uh, we're gonna use this for our, our lower lashes too. So again, just kind of mark where you wanna start. And then let's kind of go up and over. And arch. I'm gonna fill them in a little bit. Yeah. And now, I rarely do this, but I think I'm gonna actually cut my crease a little bit with this liner as well, because it is just not deep enough right there where I want it to be. And immediately going in with that angled liner brush and blending out that before it dries. See how that just gave me a little bit more dimension? I think it did. Going in with some of that matte black to really, really deepen up the bottom of the crease. Yeah, there we go. There it is. That's what I'm looking for, hon. I think the thing with makeup is you just have to constantly just look at what you're doing. Like if you are doing something and you think it's the right technique because you saw somebody else do it, but it's not looking the way that you want it to look, just change it. Just do what you need to do. Actually taking some of that black and just going straight up into the brow. And then again with that shader brush, taking some of that black really blending the brow into the crease. And then I'm just gonna take that angled brush again, the 763 with some of that black, and I'm just gonna like, I'm not gonna go over the entire brow, but I'm just gonna add a little bit, a couple of strokes here and there, just to soften it up. I don't want it to look super I don't want to be full on Sasha Velour drawn brows, like cartoon brows. I want it to look a little bit more natural. And this will help that. Super cute. Since I just did that, I don't think I really need to erase uh, underneath my brows and do a cleanup. Normally I do that with concealer, but I don't think I'm going to do that today because when you have like the bold black brow, I think it's already enough contrast. I don't have to really do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to line my eyes top of my eyes, just gonna create a basic wing, again, using that physi physician's formula <laughs> eye booster. I'm going all the way over here. And what I love about this pigment is that it's not a super chunky glitter, so going over it really isn't a problem. With some like glitter eyes, it's like kind of crazy to then try to do liner on top. But with this Cosmic Candy from Magnolia, girl, it's a dream. And then looking straight ahead and doing my wing and then filling it in. They're not the most even wings, but they're gonna do. And then actually going to put that uh, same blue cream eyeshadow on my lower lash line and on my waterline. I'm actually interested in this being a little more matte. Uh, so what I'm going to do is take this 780 pencil brush and first I'm just going to smudge that out a little bit. And then Going into my Vizart Editorial uh, Brights palette. Ooh. 
I'm gonna take this kind of lighter blue shade, just with that pencil brush. Wow, this is really pigmented. And I'm just gonna, gonna dab it and blend it. I mean, bye. Underneath the eye is what I tried to just say then. Going back with that liner, Physician's Formula, and tracing a lower lash line, a new lower lash line. And here's the part where you get to fix any wonkiness with that wing. Go back with that matte black and just smudge out the bottom of that wing. Oh, this brush is way too big. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Going back in with the angled liner brush again. Next, I'm gonna curl my lashes. I think my lashes are getting weirder and weirder <laughs> the more drag I do. Like, they are just like, they have no idea what's going on. They have no idea which way they're supposed to face. I'm taking the IT uh, Cosmetics No Tug Waterproof Anti-Aging Gel Eyeliner. Uh, this is in the shade Black running that on my tight line. This is impossible to do with these lights on. So I'm just gonna face away and I'm gonna do it because, oof. I also filled in some of that upper lash line. Ooh, my eyes are all teary now. Ooh, girl. Now applying some CoverGirl Super Sizer Waterproof Mascara. I really like this. It's like a great drugstore mascara. I like this kind of little wand. Um, and it really is waterproof. It lasts a fabulous amount of time. I always get whatever I put on my tight line on my contact lens. And now it's just like in my eye. And look, there we go. Awesome. Full on smudged. Beautiful. I feel like I have to take my contact out. I'm gonna go try to fix my eyes, put on some lashes, and I will be right back. I got my lashes on, my glue is drying. Lashes really just make a look come together, especially for me, because I use my lashes to kind of create that cat eye shape because I have very hooded eyes. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna show you this technique that I've been doing a lot lately. It is drawing on my lower lashes. I always get compliments on my lower eyelashes, like in my Instagram pictures and stuff, and I don't, I don't know if a lot of people know that I just draw them on. I don't apply them anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore because I find that they often just don't last. I'll, I'll sweat them off or something. So here's what I do. I take my black eyeliner, my Physician's Formula Eye Booster. I've been using it this whole tutorial. Uh, and I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna draw like little lashes, little strokes, kind of more dramatic out towards the edge. And then, you know, kind of follow that line in and just smaller as they come in towards the center. And then I also kind of like fill it in here to kind of make it really mirror that cat eye shape. This is like, it, you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna fuck this up. It's not gonna look good. It's really hard to fuck this up because even if you're like a little sloppy, that just makes it look a little bit more natural. Anyway, so look, there's my lower lashes. Boom, no eyelash glue, nothing, fabulous. Voila, all right, let's zoom out and finish this face. <sighs> okay, whew, that eye look is done. Let's get into this face. First off, let's try to fix this upper lip. Now I've done this before and I think it's pretty functional. I'm actually gonna take, just because I already used some Shea Moisture before, I'm gonna take the Shea Moisture Mineral Powder Foundation in Porcelain. This is the lightest shade that they make. I'm gonna take the sponge that comes with it, and I'm just gonna get a good amount of product on, and I'm just gonna like pack in right here on my upper lip and try to smooth out all of that texture. Semi-functional, I would say. I'm actually gonna use that same powder puff thing and I'm gonna take some of the white from the Lunatic Cosmetic Labs and see if I can't, yeah, lighten her up. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think it is what it is. I think we're just gonna have to live with some texture up there. It's fine, I'm a drag queen. I wish there was like, should I get electrolysis like just on my upper lip? Like, I don't know. I, I don't want it, I wanna, 
be able to grow a beard if I want to, but she's always, it's always just super weird there. Maybe I should try, I don't know what I should try. Anyway, if anyone has any suggestions, I feel like I've asked this before. <sighs> How do you reduce that upper lip sweat? I don't know. Uh, finally, we're gonna go back into the brushes that I was supposed to be trying out this whole time, which I guess I have been. Uh, we're gonna use uh, Elf's Moonlight Pearls, which is just a beautiful baked highlighter, and uh, the Delium Tools 944 Tapered Contour Brush. Now here it is compared to the Tapered Powder Brush. Definitely, uh, definitely smaller, similar kind of uh, give. So we're gonna use that, and I'm just gonna go in with the highlight, kind of get a good amount of product there, and then just packing. And that's not nearly enough highlight for me. So I'm actually gonna go in, get some product on that brush, use my uh, Urban Decay D-Slick setting spray, and I'm just gonna spritz it once. Oh God, ah! And hopefully that'll make it show up a little bit more. Let's see. Oh honey. I don't know if this is really effective though. I'm not loving this highlighter. I feel like I've used this before. I've tried it out before. It's a little subtle. It's not the most. And I'm a dry queen, I kinda want the most. All right, we're gonna build it up, we're gonna add layer. All right, I'm just gonna go into my favorite highlighter of the moment, the Makeup Forever Pro Light Fusion Highlighter in the shade 01. Oh, girl, this is stunning. I'm just gonna take that same brush, really get it in there. Uh-huh, okay, much better. This brush, I think, is a little dense for most people's highlights, I would say. Um, but for me, I think it's working. There's a tiny little bit there. Nothing there, <laughs> and nothing on the chin. I'm actually going to take another Delian Tools brush. What else we got? We're running out of brushes here. Yeah, I haven't used this. This is the square, oh no, I will use, will I use this? We'll see. Do I have anything that I have light product on? Okay. I wanna put some of that highlight right there, but I don't really have a good brush for it. <sighs> what am I gonna do? I'm just actually just brushing off on a towel this, uh, my bold concealer brush. This is the one I use to pack on that pigment. I don't mind if some of that pigment, the Cosmic Candy from Magnolia gets on my brow highlight, but I'm just gonna take the tip of it and get it in the very edge of this highlighter. And I'm just going to go right under the highest point of my brow arch, which of course I've created, just to give it a little bit more lift like as I turn my head to the side. There we go. Ugh, it's so beautiful and pink toned. Isn't that great? Cool, so now that I'm lit, now I'm gonna take, uh, this is, so this is my, I showed you my like contoury, highlighty version. Uh, I, I rearranged these, and then this is my kind of bronzy blush version. So I put all the blushes and all of the bronzers, uh, or shades that would be a bronzer on me in this palette. And what I'm gonna do is take my Delian Tools, this is uh, the powder blending brush, 959. And let's see, I think we're actually gonna go in with uh, this kind of deep pink shade right here. I think it's called like medium rose. Gonna get a good amount of product on there. And then I'm just gonna subtly blend, because this is from the uh, volume two palette, I think, so it's pretty pigmented. But if you use a pretty fluffy brush like this is, kind of is fine. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Isn't that nice? I'm placing this on the backs of my cheeks, kind of between the highlight and contour shades and then I'm taking it a little bit up onto the cheekbones. And because I want a little bit more lightness on the cheekbones, I'm actually gonna take this top, like kind of bright peach blush shade to find out exactly which one that is. And I'm gonna smile and get my apples. Pretty. Then while I'm here, even with that blush product on, I'm going to take some of this. I think this is the light warm shade. And I'm just going to bronze a little bit towards the back of my cheeks because I feel like it looks a little muddy there. But I want to keep that contour, but I want to just warm it up a little bit. And uh, you know, normally I would just like, I would add a bronzer with a separate brush, but I kind of think this is fine too because I want some of that pink to be a part of the rest of my look too. See, I think that really just changed it. I think it went from like muddy to a little warmer. And I'm just like going over any edges 
and then even on the sides of my nose. Cute. And for lips, I'm gonna be super boring and do like my favorite matte red lip. First, I'm gonna take off any excess product I have in my lips with a paper towel. Ah, watch your fingernails. And that favorite red lip, of course, is going to be the shade Cherry Blossom Liquid Lipstick by Colored Rain. I'm gonna try to show you how I do my kind of new lip shape that I've been doing. So I, oh, I stretch out my lips. Uh, get the bottom. I mean, lips are kind of uneven. I mean, everyone's are. Mm. So then for the top, I get like my real lip shape. Then I'm gonna go over it a little bit. I'm just gonna go a straight line across the cupid's bow to kind of like give myself a guide for like how big I'm gonna make my lips. And then take it out. Then I kind of open her up and really fill in everything. Smooth out those edges. And while we're here and talking about edges, I've got some lip brushes here. Let's try this one. This is the Delian Tools 546 Square Lip. I'm gonna try to use this and like really go in on the edges there. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that liquid lipstick and really try to like just get these edges down. Let's see if I if it works. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, liking, not sure if doing liquid lipstick with this brush is like its intended purpose, but it's okay, she's doing it. Trying to even out the shape, always a struggle, especially while trying to stay in a frame, you're welcome. Let's go back to that doe foot. I mean, she's not really even, but Uh, okay, uh, one just little uh, tiny touch-up coat. And then, just because we're here and I feel like we should just go for it and go crazy, I'm gonna go back with that pigment and my, my bold concealer brush, uh, that pigment Cosmic Candy from Magnolia Makeup, and I'm going to dab it into the center of the lip. Ah, so good. That's stunning. Okay, and then top. How do I do this? Right in the middle. I think I want to take that a little higher, closer to that lip line. Okay, finally adding my beauty mark. And then let's set this face with my Urban Decay D Slick. And let me go put on a wig and a dress and I will be right back. All right, y'all, this is the finished look. My beautiful kind of glam holiday with a frosted twist. I'm wearing this beautiful dress that I made. Oh, she's a full circle skirt that I added a six inch horsehair braid to. Stay tuned for some more videos about my sewing exploits. This one was made from a pattern from Gertie's Ultimate Dress Book. I love Gretchen Hirsch 
so much. Stay tuned for a lookbook and some more info about some of the clothing that I made this year. Anyways, that's what I'm wearing. I think this look turned out great. I was nervous about the skin texture stuff that I was having before, but honestly, with all these drag looks, when you just finish it, it, it you kind of can't even see any of that stuff. I mean, my upper lip looks a mess, but you know what? I don't know. I'm a drag queen. I think it's fine. I think I'm pretty. I think I'm lovely. I'm happy. I think it's great. Anyway, yeah, so that was, how many did I use? 12 of the 15 brushes. The only brushes that I did not use from this Delium Tools Phase 2 brush set were uh, this one, the 787 Defining Large Tapered Blending. I actually have this from a different line. It's just a really beautiful duo fiber. I think that's what the DF means, DF. It's uh, just a great big like kind of tapered blending brush, really nice. And this tiny, tiny small angle brush, the 762. And then this, this angled, this 708 bent eyeliner brush. I actually haven't even taken the little plastic thing off. I'm not gonna, because I don't know how to get it back on. Anyway, those are the three brushes from the brush set that I did not use. I love Delium Tools. Uh, the price point of them is a little higher than like a Morphe or an e.l.f. brush, of course, but they are all professional grade brushes. They are all synthetic, and if you want to upgrade your brush game, you know, I think this is a really nice step without kind of having to go full-on like Hakuhodo high-end situation. And price point wise, they're definitely way cheaper than something like the new Kylie Cosmetics brush set. You know, $140 is the retail price of this entire uh, brush set. I think this is a nice one. Uh, I think it's missing for me something like the 990. This, this is just like my perfect contour brush. I feel like it's great for like applying your contour and blending it at the same time time. I really don't like using something tapered like this. This is the tapered powder brush. I just feel like it's a little, you know, it's not really the way that I like to do my contour. But if you like to do your contour in that kind of way, then I think this tapered powder brush would be great. This is also a great brush, I think, for setting under the eye and stuff. Anyway, but uh, I gotta say, uh, yeah, overall, really, really happy with the the look. Really happy with these brushes. Thank you so much, Delium Tools, for sending me this brush set. I, I appreciate when brands take that risk with someone like me. I'm not gonna gush about everything. Everyone knows that from watching my channel. And uh, I appreciate that bravery, that brand bravery. Let me see if all the ones that I've used, which ones I'm really going to consistently use again. I would use the large shader brush, the 774 large shader. The pencil brush I thought was lovely, the 780 pencil. The angled brow brush was a little too too fluffy for me, like not precise enough, but I don't know, I think it still did its job. I'll probably use that again. The tapered blending brush, I really only use this for contour, so I don't really have a fair say in that. The regular blending brush, the 775, loved it. It's definitely shorter than my e.l.f. crease brush, which is my my like holy grail blending brush. This one is, uh, this one's dirty, but uh, you can kind of see the difference. Definitely from the side, similar uh, width, but once you rotate it, you can see it's a little wider, kind of like the MAC 217, which of course is a natural hairbrush. I would say that these guys are really, really similar. Slightly different shape, but definitely the same kind of idea. I think I'm gonna say I prefer this one, the Delium Tools 776 blending to the MAX 217. Did it replace my e.l.f. crease brush in terms of Holy Grail crease brush? I don't know, but I'm definitely gonna use it again. I think it was really great. In terms of the larger brushes, the Kabuki brush, you know, I don't use this type of brush at all. So it was interesting to experiment with it. I like the way it blended without really absorbing so much product. That was kind of nice, but um, it's not really my cup of tea. In terms of the brush I used for highlight, the tapered contour brush, 944. I really liked this. Once I use my kind of more pigmented highlighter, my Makeup Forever highlighter, I feel like it really was effective in applying it. So I, I might use that again. And then this, the Precision Blusher 960. It was a little too dense for packing on the powder in the way that I used it for. But at the same time, I did kind of really like that because it allowed me to kind of more quickly put on my highlight, my matte highlight than I had in the past. So yeah, so so lovely. All in all, I think these brushes are really, really great quality. I'm loving the ergonomic uh, handle. The triangle really makes them very comfortable to hold and have good control over. I think you did a really great job, Delium Tools, with this collection. I'm excited to maybe try some more brushes from this collection. And uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, thank you so much again for sending them to me. And I'm definitely gonna get a lot of use out of them. So thanks.
I'm also going to probably get a lot of use out of this, this brush bag. What I love about this is it stands up, so it's great for travel. It has two compartments. I don't know if you can see on the inside. So you can see there's like one in front and then there's like a divider for the back. So you could separate your brushes from clean and dirty. You could separate face and uh, eye. There's also, oh, there's actually three. There's like another little pouch up here. I think this is really, really clever. I'm gonna be doing a lot of traveling next year. And so I'm uh, excited to maybe bring this with me because I feel like it's a very convenient way to store your brushes uh, and travel with them. That's not like a brush roll. I feel like a brush roll takes up a lot of space. This is just a little more compact, and I really like this. Now, this retails for $25, I think, on its own. Do I think that's worth it? I don't know. Uh, but it's a nice, lovely inclusion with any brush set that you get. So that's it. I think that's my little get ready with me. Thank you for getting ready with me if you got ready. If you didn't, if you just watched, thanks for hanging out. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to make sure to not miss any more of my videos. If you really don't want to miss any of my videos, ring that little bell so you get notified whenever I upload. And if you want to support me uh, in a financial way, check out my Patreon page. All the info is in the description box down below. If you are a supporter of me on Patreon, thank you so much. These videos happen because of you. Thanks so much for hanging, y'all. I'm Kimberly Clark. Bye. Got ready. Get got good. Gotta get ready. Gotta get a grip girl. Good got good grip girl. Gotta go.